Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to continue with another one of the most important improvements, which is included in Character Creator 5. In the previous video, we saw how to create this humanoid alien using the new HD Mesh, reaching up to subdivision level 7 in Sivirus, the automatic creation of color, normal, and displacement maps, and the ability to adjust the intensity of those maps independently for each subdivision level in Character Creator. I'm Oscar Fernandez, and before we look at the next new feature, let's create two more characters using the same process as in the previous video. Together with KickArt, we looked for two completely opposite designs that are very different from the first model, which we could consider a slightly more neutral character. In the sketches KickArt sent me, we can see that one of them will be extremely fat, with slow movements and a more peaceful appearance, while the other will be an unstoppable predator, with quick movements, agile, and with a bit of a sinister vibe. We start with the new base mesh from Character Creator and use the program's native sliders to find the main proportions, which lets us quickly and intuitively capture the essence of the character. Once we've made the initial adjustments, we send our character over to ZBrush. We press the Go Z Plus button and for now, in the settings, we're going to specify that it doesn't send any kind of map. So we uncheck the color information and the normal map and leave the subdivisions at their default settings. With the rest of the values as they are, we press Go Z and our character loads automatically into ZBrush. Now we can start sculpting. My recommendation at these early stages, when we're searching for the main shape of the character, we should use brushes that deform the mesh, like Move or even Dam Standard. But let's avoid those that add or subtract material, such as clay in any of its variants. This way, we'll always stay true to the initial topology, optimizing the final result for expressions, as well as for face blending which we'll play with later on. This is a good time to remember our four rules. Do not modify the model's topology. Do not delete the subdivision levels. Do not alter the default pose. And do not rename the sub tools. In the first model, that stubborn character was somewhat clumsy movements. It really reminded us of a bulldog, so we decided to take the face more in that direction. We can see that the base mesh, even starting from a human face, gives us incredible versatility to play with the shapes, like for example, the nose or the shape of the lips. For the second model, we were looking for something much more aggressive and emotionless, so we went for a face more like a lizard or something similar, always maintaining the integrity of the topology, especially in the primary regions. Once we have the faces done, we move on to the bodies, where each one is going to take a completely different direction. The challenge with the bulldog's body is to achieve good secondary and tertiary shapes that properly express the fat volumes throughout its body. While in the case of the reptile, one of the main features is its digitigrade legs. Anatomically speaking, the ankle would be in this area, but to make sure the animations behave correctly, we're going to move it to the start of the phalanges. Once again, we can see the versatility of the base mesh, even with such extreme changes as this one. In the case of the hands, we're back to opposite extremes, from the chubby, pudgy hand of the bulldog to the fibrous claw of the lizard. Finally, all that's left is to add the finer details, like skin texture, scales, spines, and so on. Sculpting a few more shapes, using alphas to generate textures, or chisel-type brushes to create more detailed forms. Once again, I had to turn to KitKart for the coloring phase, and he sent me these proposals. We needed all the characters to belong to the same world, but with a completely different color palette, keeping some golden and metallic areas as a unifying element among them or as a common feature of their planet. The texturing, as in the previous case, will be done entirely in ZBrush using polypaint, applying gradients for the base color, masks, alphas, and manual painting. For the more specific details, Once our models are finished in terms of sculpting, we can bring them back into Character Creator. One thing to keep in mind is that we don't even need to keep that original file where we made the first changes. You just need to load the neutral base mesh and you can already connect your character to it. We start at level zero, this time selecting all the maps so that GoZ Plus generates them automatically. When updating in Character Creator, we check adjust bone to fit more. 
so that all the bones automatically adjust to the new proportions. In the case of the lizard, we can see that the ankle joint goes directly to the exact spot we want, since CC automatically looks for the polygons that correspond to this joint. Once we've checked that everything is fine, using either a body animation or a facial animation, we subdivide one level in CC5 and go back to ZBrush to export the maps to mesh corresponding to level 1. We repeat the process for level 2. And now our characters are finished. Here's a simple but effective extra tip for you. Let's see how to create a mask for the golden areas with metallic shine. We export the diffuse maps for each part of the body to open them in Photoshop. We create a new layer and fill it with black. We make a color range selection of the golden areas and fill them with white on the black layer. We save the map and drag it into the metallic slot in CC5. We tweak the parameters a bit and that's it. With this simple method, we can apply new metallic areas and other effects in Character Creator. I'm not a great animator. Well, let's be honest, I have no idea how to animate. But thanks to the motion libraries in Character Creator and some tweaks in iClone, I've been able to create a custom walk cycle for each character. In iClone, I've loaded an animation that fits each of them, and I've slightly adjusted the position of some body parts using an edit motion layer. By doing this on the first frame, the modification stays throughout the entire animation. We select the initial and final frames, save it, and now we can apply it in CC5. To put the finishing touches on our characters, I'll load textures for the eyes and teeth from the Character Creator Library, just using the material and keeping the mesh as it is. I couldn't res resist bringing this whole workflow into my own field, which is creating figures for printing. So I took each of the characters, posed them in CC5, and created a new file for each one. Using Subtool Master, I loaded each character into the same project, positioned the models, created a super basic base with an extra element or two, and that was it. To consider it a finished piece, it would need a lot more work, but what you see on screen didn't even take me an hour, including posing the three characters and creating the base. Just imagine how far we could go with a good idea and by dedicating the necessary time and care. Now let's move on to the main topic of this video, which is Actor. Mixer, the new plugin for Character Creator 5, provides us with an intuitive and fast system for creating and customizing characters. It allows for non-destructive deformation of the head, the entire body, or individual facial features, simply by dragging the mouse. But the best way to understand how it works is to continue with our project. Once we have CC5 installed, the easiest way is to open Reallusion Hub and install the plugin from there. Although we could also go to the Reallusion website and download the content directly from the platform. The first thing we're going to do is create the mixer presets so that Actor Mixer can use them as targets in the blend wheels. We load one of the characters and then open the Create Mixer Assets panel. We can do this from the Actor Mixer toolbar icon or from Plugins and GT. Actor Mixer and GT. Create Mixer Assets. We enter a name and a path for our custom slider. We also check under Parts folder so that the generated mixer slider is placed in the appropriate location. In our case, we're going to check all the boxes to generate a complete set of sliders, and we'll also check another option. Also, save avatar presets so we have the sliders available in the Morphs window. When you click the Create button, the system will split the character into different parts controlled by the generated mixer sliders. We repeat the steps for the other characters. Here, you need to keep in mind that the subdivision level you select will determine the type of mixer slider that gets created. Normal mixer sliders for subdivision level 0, and HD mixer sliders for subdivision levels 1 and 2. These mixer sliders are the ones that will be affected by the actor mixer blending operations. We'll look at this in more detail later. We already have the ingredients to start cooking, but before we begin mixing the characters, let's create some custom thumbnails for each of them, matching the original actor mixer style. This step is optional, but if we're going to do it, let's do it right. We load one of the characters and apply a pose similar to the default thumbnails. 
When building a character, it's important to focus mainly on the volumes. So we'll apply the new grayscale atmosphere and the mannequin gray material, so the textures don't distract us. In my case, I'm also going to change the lighting, the environment so that the shadows are less deep, and I'll raise the light intensity a bit to brighten up the character more. The idea is to place our character with a camera angle similar to the actor mixer thumbnails so everything has the same aesthetic. We go to the corresponding section and click on Capture Thumbnail to capture the thumbnail. We go through the different sections, using the original thumbnails as a reference and updating ours. We do this for all three characters, and now everything is set up in a super professional way. For smoother performance, it's recommended to set the character's subdivision level to 0 or 1, depending on your system's performance. Use 2K skin textures for previewing. With all the preparations done, we finally launch Actor Mixer. We can open the panel from the Modify menu from the Actor Mixer toolbar or from Plugins and GT Actor Mixer. Once it's open, we choose the base character. In our case, we'll choose Base Male as the base mesh to start mixing, since the characters I plan to create will look a bit more human than the creatures we've already made. Once Actor Mixer is open, we'll be in Edit Mode, where we can start creating our own blend wheels using the mixer presets we just made. Let's go through each category, dragging and dropping our presets. When we select each category, we can see how it automatically syncs with the corresponding gallery in the Content Manager, so we can choose the preset that way. It's a much more efficient way to do it. By right-clicking on a target, we can replace it with another loaded one, reset it to its original state, or delete it. We can also reposition or swap targets by dragging and dropping them. Very important, each wheel must contain at least three targets. If we want to reuse the wheels we've created, we can save them as a mixer layout file. We click on the Save Wheel Set button and choose Save Active Reset to save only the current wheel, or Save Only Stacked Reset to save all the wheels from all categories. I'm also going to create another wheel where I'll include all our characters and, in addition, some others from the gallery to further enrich the result. Actor Mixer Pro includes as a free bonus Actor Mixer, Pro Core Library, and HD Human Anatomy set. So I'm also going to add some elements from these libraries and some from the base library. And the last thing we need to know about Edit Mode is that we can also group several mixed wheels into a mixer package, which allows us to easily reuse our configurations and share them with other users without having to build the wheels from scratch. Just press Save Package and select the folder where we've saved our wheels, give the package a name, and our package will be ready to quickly choose our custom wheels. Once the wheels are set up, we can start mixing the shapes. To access mixing mode, click the Start Mixing button at the bottom of the panel. And now, just drag the green dot in any direction within the wheel. As we move it, the character on stage will transform, blending the features of the mixer presets we've set as targets. We can see that there are two concentric circles on the display. If we place the green dot on the inner circle, the shapes will mix with our mixer presets, but with a greater influence from the base character. While if we move to the outer circle, the presets will have a stronger influence in the mix. With this in mind, we go through all the categories, looking for the desired shapes until we finish our character. Once we're done, we stop the mix by pressing the Start Mixing button that's currently active. Now all that's left is to apply the skin, dragging it directly from the Content Manager. When we're satisfied with the result, we close Actor Mixer. But it doesn't end here, since we can keep making fine adjustments using the sliders until we get the desired result. Since we're talking about sliders, let's go over a few considerations that can help us when creating our characters. The sliders that have the green Actor Mixer icon will be affected by the mix, while those that don't have that icon won't be affected. This is very practical if we want to keep certain features unchanged. Now let's create a second character where we'll modify the length of the arms and legs, and a few other elements using the general mixer sliders.
Now we see that when we start mixing these features, they stay the same. This could be super useful for creating characters from the same family who share those common traits. We could also apply a pose or a facial expression to our character and go through the entire mixing process with the character posed. This way, we can get a much more dynamic and detailed view of how the mixes affect the character's appearance and body language, allowing for even more precise and consistent design. And now we move on to the final details of our character. Since CC5 has improved the eyes with greater detail, HD, we have direct control over the iris, being able to modify both its size and color, the shading of the eyelid, and realistic effects for occlusion and the tear line, in addition to improvements in the eyelashes. We also have new controls for the teeth that we can use to finish fine-tuning our character. With our character completely finished, all that's left is to check that everything works properly. To do this, we can add a facial animation to see how it behaves, and also some body animation to make sure everything is working as expected. The behavior is spectacular, so now all that's left is to save our new creation. We go to the content, manager, open the custom tab, go to the character section, click save, give it a name, and that's it. With this, we now have our character completely finished. As we've seen, Actor Mixer gives us an incredibly intuitive way to create an endless variety of characters in a simple way that even becomes addictive. But these aren't the only new features, so stay tuned for the new functionalities in Character Creative 5.